I'm an application engineer in the St. Louis office, and I'm currently on the hardware uh, side. I used to be on the SolidWorks side as well. So, uh, like you said, I, I have a little bit of expertise with uh, with both sides. Um, but today, I'm going to be focusing on uh, the Stratasys J55 and talk about some of the, the cool features of it and uh, what you can uh, think about might be, you know, something that's uh, valuable to you. So, uh, in this presentation, I'm going to give a very brief uh, intro to, to Stratasys, uh, the company that, that makes our uh, polymer 3D printers, and then talk about the polyjet uh, technology um, in general, which is the type of uh, technology that is being used in the Stratasys J55. And then we'll be going into a little bit more depth about the features of the Stratasys J55 and some of the, um, the philosophy of you know, why uh, this is such a great product. And then just at the end, just a few tips and tricks um, things that you may not have thought about going with uh, Gear Prince. So let's get move on. So Stratasys has been around for, for quite a while. They actually um, invented and still own the, uh, the copyright for uh, FDM or fused deposition modeling uh, technology. That's the, the kind of standard that everyone thinks about when they think about uh, 3D printing, that's where you have your plastic filament, where it is then extruded through a heated tip, and it basically draws like a hot glue gun with that plastic, and then builds layer by layer to uh, create your models. But they do have a, a wide range of technologies currently, which I'll go into just a little bit. In addition to that, they're industry leaders in professional grade 3D printing. So they're not quite uh, to the level of like the hobbyist or the entry level consumer. They are focused more on uh, industrial use, uh, working with design firms, uh, manufacturing sites, uh, engineering, um, and things like that. They do have a global reach. And they've got headquarters located in Israel as well as the United States up in Michigan. And like I said, they've got a wide range of technologies from what they've um, developed with FDM to Polyjet, which is what I'll be talking more about um, just in a little bit, as well as stereolithography. And they're always developing new things depending on you know what would be valuable to the market. So. Who knows, in a couple of years, they could have another three technologies. Uh, I'm not expecting that, but you never know. So the way to kind of think about Polyjet is it's kind of like an inkjet printer that you would have at home or in your office, except it builds upwards, where your inkjet printer prints one layer of ink on top of uh, the paper, this shoots a, um, a photosensitive resin onto the build tray, which is then cured. And then it uh, indexes upwards just a little bit, sprays a new layer of, of this resin, and then cures it and continues up and up and up. The, the main benefit that you're going to get with uh, polyjet versus something like FDM, again, that, that weed whacker type, uh, type technology, is that you're going to get really nice high detail features as well as being able to get full color. Or you can even just, if you don't really care about the color, you can also just mix other materials to get your desired properties, whether that be um, rigid materials, flexible, uh, color, clear, and anywhere in between those. So you can have flexible colors that uh, go from slightly flexible to very soft or anywhere in between. So it's a very flexible technology that uh, in particular helps design firms and, and things like that. But it's also 
used in a lot of different uh, industries, things like uh, dental and medical fields, um, as well as even just some you know, standard engineering design. So a little bit about some of the materials that PolyJet offers. We've got, in general, their photopolymer thermosets. And that's a really uh, fancy way of saying that they're plastics that are cured with light. They use a, a UV lamp to cure that resin. And being a thermoset, as opposed to a thermoplastic, it's not going to melt or revert back to that resin once it's been cured. So unlike your FDM technologies where you melt down that plastic into the shape you want, it'll, it can melt if it gets too hot um, for the usage. This uh, won't melt, but they will uh, burn and turn to ash um, if you reach you know, extreme temperatures. Uh, a brief summary of some of the, the polyjet materials that Stratasys offers. We've got the Vero family, which is rigid. It's got a full color uh, capability. So a cyan, magenta, and yellow. Again, just like on your uh, printer at home, that can then be mixed together uh, to form all the other colors that you want. And they can also be um, opaque or translucent. So you can have uh, solid colors or translucents like that water bottle up there. Then you have the Agilis and Tango family, and these are flexible rubber-like materials that start at a shore value of 30. So very, very soft, but it's also blendable with Vero, those rigid uh, materials, so that you can get different stiffnesses as well as different colors uh, where you can mix you know, a white Agilis with a, a blue blue Vero and get a nice light blue finish. Then there's also digital materials that are essentially blended materials so that they have two components to them. And uh, these are, you know, a little more specialized uh, for the standalone ones, but um, any blended uh, material, whether that be uh, Agilis and Vero, um, does technically become a digital material as well. So that, that is an option, but we do offer materials that simulate um, ABS. So you can get more uh, toughness and strength out of it, as well as some high temperature uh, materials as well. And then there's also more specialized materials, whether that be for the dental uh, industry, the medical industry, or just biocompatible ones that um, are approved for skin contact and things like that. So there's a whole bunch of different uses and uh, specializations that you can go into with uh, this technology. So the J55 is a really cool product because it kind of uh, drifts away from some of the uh, standards that a lot of people have grown to think about when you start getting away from simple desktop uh, 3D printing. It's the first office-friendly full-color 3D printer, which is uh, very cool. So this is this is going to allow uh, people who are not engineers, not you know 3D printing operators, to effectively use this product without having to have a separate lab or something like that for uh, their their 3D printing needs, which is really exciting. It's got a revolutionary build tray in the sense that the build tray revolves as opposed to being a flat plate that just moves up and down and the print head uh, moves side to side, just again, like your inkjet printer at home. And this helps keep the, the printer really quiet it's less than uh, 50 decibels, so you barely hear it at standard uh, uh, office volumes. And it's got a really nice small footprint, like you can see uh, compared to that chair. It, it can sit right next to your desk, 
and it's not going to be a problem for you at all. And again, it's built with designers in mind, not just uh, engineers or operators. So everything that goes into uh, maintaining uh, this device has been streamlined and simplified so that anyone can very easily learn to use it, specifically people who are not um, te technologically inclined, which is very cool. Uh, and even for people who are technically inclined, like myself, there's a lot of uh, little um, quality of life uh, benefits that they've they put into this new machine that uh, hasn't quite gotten uh, to the the next um, the other types of machines in the polyjet range. So I'm excited to to see if uh, some of these things are are moved in. Like the cleaning process is just much easier and simpler than than the other machines. All the calibration and things like that are very easily reachable within the the touch screen. It's it's just a great easy to use uh, system. Now here's a little uh, high tech image of the the build tray that you can see down there. And like I said, the tray is actually rotating as opposed to the head indexing side to side. And that's going to a slow down your uh, or quiet down your operations because you don't have the head continuously starting and stopping and things like that. But you also get uh, a, a much better uh, efficiency in terms of the footprint within the uh, within your office due to this technology as well. And so you can see the as the tray moves around, you've got those lines, those circles going around the tray. And those are essentially the areas that the uh, print head can reach. So there's a few different regions that can go. Each revolution, it'll do one of those regions. And then during the transition zone, which is up front, that's an area that you won't be able to print in, but that's where it allows the head to then slide to the next um, area to continue printing. The total build volume is 1178 cubic centimeters. And that's not, you know, super, uh, super illustrative to a lot of people, but Essentially, what you need to know is that uh, you've got about a foot that you can build upwards, as well as working around this about two foot um, uh, build tray. So you can fit a lot of uh, things on there, but the one thing you do have to be careful about is with uh, very long parts or um, large rectangular parts that might be a bit bulky and awkward to fit on this now curved uh, build platform. It does full color like I was talking about before with other uh, polyjet. It can get up to uh, 300 DPI color, so you're going to get um, some very nice color. Not quite as high detail as the 850 or something like that, but it's also much, much less expensive. So currently, uh, this printer can use uh, only rigid materials. It can't quite yet do uh, flexible or any of the digital materials like that digital ABS that I mentioned earlier. But it does use the Vero cyan, magenta, and yellow Vivid. And Vivid means it's uh, slightly translucent as well as black, white, clear, and draft gray. And draft gray is actually a really cool material because it's cheaper, it prints faster, and you're able to quickly prototype uh, parts 
much faster and cheaper so you can do more iterations if you don't need that that full color um, ability that you would be getting with those other materials again saving you a little bit of money and allowing you to uh, go through more iterations going back to the color though this printer is actually uh, pantone validated and while the pantone cal uh, uh, catalog has thousands and thousands and thousands of, of colors. Uh, this printer has nearly 2000 Pantone validated colors. And uh, for those who don't know, Pantone is essentially a standard for colors so that if you select a certain uh, color out of the, the Pantone catalog, it'll be exactly that when it is uh, reproduced and printed. So it's a good way to standardize what you're expecting your, your final result to be. And Stratasys is the first company to offer Pantone validated 3D printers, which is very exciting. It just happened uh, late last year. And it, it offers a lot of uh, great benefits for um, companies, especially again, these design companies. Uh, that want their full color 3D print designs as well. And also has an optional air filtration device just so you can make sure you isolate any sort of um, smells or fumes that might be coming off the machine during printing. Whereas, you know, other machines like stereolithography have giant vats of uh, smelly resin that you then have to. Uh, wash off and then do a post cure. And these all are all things that can, you know, uh, cause different fumes and gases to be released. This has a nice air filtration device to make sure that it doesn't bother anyone in an office setting. Um, I currently don't have mine even attached to the, the printer in the St. Louis office. Um, I keep putting it off. And I haven't noticed anything uh, even while, you know, climbing around the, uh, the machine, you know, doing maintenance on the back just to while it's printing. And I haven't really noticed any sort of uh, bad smell. But um, if you are, you know, in an office, you may want to have that as well. So that's a very handy um, option that is available. So let, let's do a couple. Uh, tips and tricks for you. The, the number one big thing besides, you know, your standard, you know, make sure you upkeep the machine and clean it when you need to and all that is when you're putting parts on the tray, you want to make sure that they're as close to the center of the tray as possible and within the same kind of belt as each other if you were to continue their their row essentially um, around the build platform. So if you see those those two on the left, I've got two little Millennium Falcons here on that that print tray. And having them staggered like that, they're still very close to each other, but because the head needs to index back and forth it triples the build time. So that that build takes 11 hours and 22 minutes. And that's pretty long for what, you know, those two uh, parts are. And that's because, you know, they're not lined up properly. If you were to then go in and, and make sure that they're sticking close to the center of the tray and are in the same, you know, belt, of the revolution, you're going to cut down the time significantly down to four hours and 20 minutes. Th that's an absolutely insane time saving. Even if you were to then, uh, instead of moving them to the center and keep them at the same belt, you know, on the outside of the build tray, you would still significantly speed up the time compared to that 11 hours and 22 minutes but you'd be more around uh, six and a half to seven hours. So still much quicker, but 
again, having them close to the center of the tray is going to speed up your print time significantly. And then a couple options that you've got uh, within uh, GrabCAD print. Um, have the option to change the support reinforcement or the, the strength and support material, as well as the core materials of your print. And this is a great option if you've got a certain material that you're using a little bit more often than you want to, and you want to make sure that you have enough for um, a couple prints coming down the road. Maybe you're worrying, oh, I might be running out of my white material, and I know I've got a fairly large uh, print coming up that's going to be white, and I've got material that's coming in. Well, you can uh, change the color of the core of your part uh, to be either white, clear, or the same material, so following the same color pattern as the surface of the part itself. So instead of having uh, just a millimeter or so, or a couple millimeters of color and then white, you can have a couple millimeters of color and then clear or another material um, as needed. With the J55, there's also uh, a support strengthening material. So with the, the soluble support, there's also a tiny grid of rigid material just to help uh, strengthen and give it a little bit more support as it's uh, rotating on the platform. Uh, you can change those colors or what material is going in there if you need to, again, just to save a little bit of material or even out the wear on your print heads if necessary. If you're worrying that you might be wearing out one, uh, one print head just a little bit too quickly. There's also a, dis a delayed start option to further increase office friendliness. And I really like this. Um, this option for, again, if I was sitting next to it, and even though it's very quiet and, you know, it, we've got our air, air filtration device, you may not want to, to bother with that. And it might be a little bit distracting because there are some lights that are going on in the machine and things like that. So you can use this delayed start option so that if you know you're putting um, a print in in the afternoon, say you want a delayed start for later that evening, just so that the uh, the part's going to be done ready for you the next morning, as opposed to you know just as you're about to leave or something like that. You have this option just so you don't have to worry about it um, during the day, and that that's a great option that I like to use a lot. And with that, uh, those are the, the last couple of tips and tricks that I have. A lot of the, the operation is, is similar uh, to other PolyJet uh, devices if you're used to it. But again, it's just a little bit easier and it, it kind of takes away from all the tips and tricks that uh, you kind of gather with some of the other uh, larger, more cumbersome uh, machines. Uh, this is streamlined to make things easy as possible from the get-go. So I hope this was uh, beneficial. And uh, you know, please feel free to uh, ask questions or look at our uh, blogs. We have um, several blogs that have been released on the J55. I'm going to release another one next week. So uh, if you're interested, keep an eye out for that.